it is time to drink juice and make video games. And my juice just arrived. Chewy. Hi everybody, my name is Christian. This is Lazy Death Academy. And today we are going to learn how to make a video game from scratch. We are going to go from complete zero, I have no idea how to even write a single line of code, to game is completely finished and released online. And, pinky promise, there's not gonna be any kind of, you know, and then you draw the rest of the owl kind of shenanigans. You know what I'm talking about, a lot of tutorials go like, you know, and then blah, 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 some time have passed and now everything is in place. Ooh, it looks not nice now. How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, none of that stuff is happening here. This is the real deal. If you ever wanted to know how to make video games, this is the place to get started. In this series, we are going to make a shmup, which is a very, very funny word, but also it's short for shoot em up game. And also sometimes this genre is called STG, shooting type game. Uh, and you absolutely know, you have seen this game for 100%. It's like, you know, where you have like a little small ship and you can move it around and you can press a button and pew, 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 you shoot. And then from the top there's the big enemies coming down and, and huge swarms and then shooting at you. And then there's like a boss fight and you have to fight the boss and then the big explosion. You know, this kind of game. I personally think this is the best game, type of game to get started with as kind of like your very, very first game because it is very, very easy to get something going and it has like, there's just a lot of fun to be had with this kind of game, you know, there's like, you know, bullets, explosion, there's enemies, you know, there's just a lot of immediate action that is intoxicating and very rewarding to work on. And even if you don't like these types of games, that's fine. You still learn a lot of skills that are easily transferable to other games. So it's still a good game to get started with. Now we are going to start with a very, very simple shmup, something that looks like this. Uh, something that's reminiscent of very, very old shmups like Galaga. This is because we are getting started. We are trying to get the basics down. Later down the line in this tutorial, we're actually gonna dig into the genre. We're gonna reach out to people who are very experienced about this and we're gonna try to turn this simple shmup into an awesome shmup. But that's coming up later. First, we need to learn how to walk. Then we're gonna learn how to run, how to turn simple games into awesome games. So if you are into shmups and if you always want to find out how to make a shmup pop, how to make it really, really good, then this is still a good place for you to be, but you have to be patient. And finally, we are going to be using Pico 8, the Pico 8 engine. If you ever want to get into Pico 8, understand how this works, this is also the perfect place for you to be. If you don't know what Pico 8 is, I have created a video for you to check out that explains what Pico 8 is. Now, I will add that recently one big thing changed about Pico 8 that is not covered in the video, and that is that Pico 8 now has also a free version available for you. You can just visit this URL and it will just run in your browser and you can follow uh, the tutorial along on this browser version of the game. Or you can still get you know, the desktop version like in the old ways. It's up to you how you want to follow this tutorial. And in fact, I just want to just jump right in. So uh, I want you to just pause the video and make sure that your Pico 8 looks kind of like my Pico 8 looks here. And just we're gonna get started. All right, guys, so this is what Pico 8 looks like when you start it up. It looks a bit scary. It looks like an old computer. That's intentional. It's supposed to, it wants to pretend to be an old computer, but don't worry. We can, I will explain what's happening on this screen, but we can easily just press escape at any given point and it will launch into this UI, which is more user-friendly, which is specifically laser-focused, designed, to make video games. This is a perfect UI laser focus on making video games. I will walk you through some of the features. In this first screen that you see, this very, very blue screen here, this is the screen where we will write our code. We're gonna write code right away, but first I'm gonna show you the other screens. Up top here, you have a bunch of symbols. These symbols, you can switch between the different kind of like apps, so to speak. Uh, different modes that you can set the editor to to edit different aspects of the game. 
This second button here, for example, this one that looks like a like a vampire. Yeah, vampire. This is the sprite editor, and here you can later do some pixel art. We're gonna jump into this in a second here. Now this little Mondrian kind of looking painting thing. This is the map editor and here you can build a level. This is kind of like an optional aspect of, of, of Pico 8. You're not necessarily going to be hanging out here, but I'm still going to show you how this works. And then there's this and this. Both of these are um, music related stuff. This is makes sound effects and music and then this re creates bigger compositions out of smaller compositions. Uh, we're going to touch that later on as well. Now I want you to jump back into code because we are going to jump straight away into coding something. Now let me give you a final preface on this one. Personally, I teach people how to get started with programming since, you know, a couple of years now. I've been here before. I know what you're thinking, especially if you've never print programming or if you had bad experiences in the past learning programming, you feel like programming might be something that's difficult, that you, maybe your brain is not wired the right way, that this is, this is something that's very impenetrable and intimidating. I'm not gonna deny that programming has its difficulties. Obviously it does. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a weird thing to do. But I think the problem here is that we are teaching programming in the wrong way. We are focusing on programming as this kind of thing where there's like a right and wrong way to do things. And you have to like, you know, wrap your head around all of the concepts and you have to like do those complicated things. We're so, we're so cramped up about programming, like, Ugh! And something I like to do here is I want us to kind of change the way we think about these things. I want to less focus on, you know, what's the right or wrong way to do things. I want to focus on what's the thing that this thing allows us to do. What can we do with this thing? I want us to think, I want us to return to being like a child that opens a box of crayons and it takes a crayon and just starts, you know, <laughs> doing things with a crayon without thinking about whether it's beautiful or not. Just like seeing what it does and having fun with it and just making a huge, huge mess. I think that's kind of like a very... I don't know, productive way of thinking about tools, creative tools, just like seeing what I do, having fun with them, finding your fun with them and not worrying too much about doing things wrong or right. And then once you found your fun, once you found your approach, once you, you know, honed down the thing that I really enjoy about the process, then it's going to be easier for you to overcome, you know, the difficulties that come on later on. But first, let's just like see what, what, what we can do here. All right, let's just start writing some code. Now, programming, a program is basically like a recipe, right? Like a cooking recipe, like when you buy a cake, you know, there's like a, you open the, your book with your recipes and there's gonna be like a li list of commands for you to do. You have to get the sugar and the spoon and whatever. I'm not really good at baking cakes. And and that's what a, what a program is, a recipe. And so we're just gonna write some things for the program to, for our computer to do. The computer will follow our commands and we'll bake a cake. Now, obviously we kind of have to write the commands in a very, very specific language for the computer to understand, but actually Pico 8 will help us in this process along. Look at this. We are going to try to put something on the screen. I'm going to write P print, P R I N T. And you can see why, as I'm typing, you know, now it's gray, but now when I t type the T, what happened? The text turned green. That's because Pico, is, Pico 8 is like, wait a minute. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> I've, 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 I've recognized this word. I'm going to let Christian there, out there, my programmer, I'm going to let them know that I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying, fam. I know that you're going to print something on the screen. That's why turn the text turns green. That's good. That's good. Now, from then on, things are slightly less intuitive. We're going to open a parenthesis where I come from. This is a, a bracket, just a bracket, because there's square brackets and curly brackets, right? So why is it called a parenthesis and not a bracket? English language doesn't make sense. Anyway, parenthesis and then quotation marks. Something is odd about those quotation marks. We're going to talk about those quotation marks later. Then we're going to write some text. We can write whatever you want. Uh, a very, very standard, very famous text to write here is hello world. Hello world. And you see this text is all blue. Ha. Huh. P 
Pico 8 is communicating something with us. We're going to talk about it in a second. And then we're going to close the quotation marks. Now the quotation marks are still blue. We're going to talk about it in a second. And then we're going to close the parentheses or the brackets, no matter how you want to call this. This is our first line of code. <gasps> Okay, how are we going to execute this? How are we going to tell Pico8 that this is something that we want to now not, like do? Well, you're going to press escape. You're back to the scary screen, the, the black scary screen. And we're going to just write R-U-N for run. Enter. Ta-da! It prints our little text in, in this column of text. Yay! We're programmers! We programmed our first program. Thank you so much. I will be here all week. Uh, you can type in the chat if you have any more questions, all right? And then you can finish the rest of the game, right? Jokes aside. But yeah, we have wrote our first line of code and it executes perfectly fine. We can now write things into this weird black window. Now, as I said before, a program can consist of multiple lines and we can actually just add more print statements to our little program. Let's just do that. I'm going to press escape to return to our editor. I'm just going to do another print statement. And at this point, it, you know, you can write anything you want. You know, hello, this is, is dog. I really like old memes. I, I don't know. I, I there's, there's vintage memes, you know? Uh, so yeah, you can write something like this here, or you can print, you know, uh, Mm, okay, uh, never gonna give you up, you know, something like this. Um, so yeah, these are three print statements. I'm gonna press escape. I'm gonna run this again. Enter. Bam! Stuff is written on the screen. In this kind of like weird black area, that black area has started to fill up with stuff like we, because we see this, these three statements, but we also like see the hello world that we previously wrote. That's kind of weird. It would be nice if we could just like do like a clear screen, like, like do like make, make erase all of the safe stuff, you know, like erase the blackboard basically. We can do that as well. I'm going to press escape and I'm going to introduce you to a completely new statement. No longer printing stuff on a screen. Now we're going to clear the screen. I'm going to go all the way to the top because first we're going to clear the screen and then we're going to print stuff on a screen. And then we're going to go like CLS. CLS, three letters, turns green immediately. Again, Pico8 telling us, hey, I know exactly what you're talking about. You want to clear the screen. I got you, fam. Now we're going to have to open the parentheses and close the parentheses. Nothing inside the parentheses this time. CLS, clear the screen. Then I'm gonna print hello world. We're gonna print hello, this is dog. And then I'm gonna print never gonna give you up. I'm gonna press escape. I'm gonna type and run. <gasps> Stuff disappeared. Our text was written in the in the top left corner. Good. Good. And now we have this blink weird blinky cursor, a bit annoying, but okay. Good. Now we can print stuff on the screen. That's cool. This is fine. But this looks a little bit drab, doesn't it? It does look like exciting. It's just all black and white. Can we bring in some color? Of course we can. I'm going to press escape. Now in the CLS statement, you can actually put something inside the parentheses the way we put something in the parentheses here when we do the print statement. Uh, let's put something in the parentheses. Uh, what can we put in parentheses? Well, this time we're not going to use quotation marks. This time we are going to put a number in the parentheses and in and that, that number will tell us what color the background should turn into. Pico 8 has 16 different colors and you can see the colors if you switch over to this, this vampire, <laughs> the, the sprite vampire. You can see all of those colors here in this, in, in this table here. There are 16 different colors they can pick, choose and um, pick from. As you mouse over over different colors, you can see on the bottom left, there's going to be like a color indicator that I'm you know, telling which color we are hovering above. And you can pick any one of those colors. Just remember the number associated with it. Uh, let's just pick this one. I like the, this one, this, this deep purple, uh, which is color number two. Okay. So I'm going to click back on in our code editor. 
And I'm going to put a two in the parentheses of CLS. A two. I'm going to press escape. I'm going to type in run. Now the background has turned a different color. Can we use a different color? Of course you can. You can put a five in here. Ooh, it's a gray, not really that exciting. What about eight? I remember that's a red. Ooh, yeah, ooh, very intense. Ooh, ooh. Uh, what about 12? I think that was a blue. A lot more relaxing, I'm, I'm good with that. Let's return to two, that gives us a lot of contrast, I like that. This is good, but like, if I look at this, all the text is like bunched up in the, in the corner. And of course, like in a video game, because eventually we want to get to video games, uh, we want to put text somewhere often on the screen maybe, right? Some like, not just like in all in one corner, but maybe, you know, it's gonna, there's gonna be high score or like your current score and it's gonna be written on the bottom of the screen. Maybe you want to create some kind of UI, right? Or maybe it's a start screen and you want to put like in the center of the screen. What if I want to put something in the center of the screen? How do I do that? Well. That's where we are going to talk about coordinates. So Pico 8 screen is a very, very small screen. As you can tell, you can, the pixels are huge and chunky. The width of the screen is 128 pixels. The height of the screen is 128 pixels, nice and square. And we can position things on the screen by giving them coordinates, giving them numbers, saying like, I'm gonna put you on this pixel. When we do that, uh, we, you need two numbers. Uh, one number will indicate, you know, horizontally where the thing is that you're going to position. And the other thing is going to tell us where it is vertically, uh, where you want to position this. So uh, let's going to print something here. I'm going to print. You can, by the way, you can just easily put a gap in your program. That's fine. It will just skip all of the gaps. Um, and I'm just going to, what can we do? What? Uh, oh, hi. Man, some really, really old memes here. Oh, hi. And now something new happens. Something something new special happens. We open the parentheses. We open the quotation marks. We wrote some, some silly text. We put the quotation marks down again. We close them, basically. And now comes something new. I'm going to do a comma. Now we're going to write a number. 20, for example. I'm going to do another comma. Now I'm going to do 50, some kind of other number. Now I'm going to close the parentheses. I'm going to press escape. I'm going to go run. And now you can see Ohai is in a weird place. It's kind of further down on the screen and not quite hugging the left side, but kind of like moved a little bit uh, to the right. And these are the two numbers that we, we kind of wrote in here. The first number after the first comma, that's the horizontal. How far from the left edge of the screen, how many pixels from the left edge of the screen, we're gonna start printing the text. And the second number, the 50, is how many pixels from the top of the screen we are printing. You know, the top left of the screen, here, this location here, that is the coordinate zero, zero. And as we go to the right, the first number will get higher. So, you know, zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and all the way under, until we reach 128. And then the second number is the same thing, like the, you know, the upper row here, the upper edge is, uh, uh, the second number is zero. And as we go down, then the second number gets higher. And so, yeah, I'm gonna, you can just start writing stuff here, right? I'm here and then Google and 80 and 100, whatever, and something like this. And I'm gonna run this. As you can see, you can freely place text on the screen. Cool, 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 cool. Is it cool though? Is it cool? I mean, it's just text, right? It's, it's, we're not making a text adventure here, right? We are here to make a, a shooter, uh, you know, explosions and, and, and graphics and so forth. How are we going to bring graphics into this? No problem, gotcha. Let's go into the second tab here. And this is now where we can create sprites for our game. Down here, 
is you can is basically you know this is the sprite sheet these are the different sprites that we can edit as you can see all of them are empty except this sprite number zero which has this weird cross we're not talking about this right now just let's just ignore just just leave it there i'm gonna write i'm gonna draw something i'm gonna draw some kind of like silly i don't know like like a scary face this is this is gonna be a horror game now i'm decided i'm gonna change the genre it's gonna be a horror game very very scary face Oh, it's so scary. But actually, oh, it's a mischievous smile with the heavy eyebrows. Very scary eyebrows. Let's, let's put them, let's make them brown. Oh, oh, you, you're a scary guy. Oh, dark eyebrows now, that, that's not good. Let's, let's have, how about these? Oh, yeah, 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 that's good, that's good, okay. <laughs> and then maybe pink, pink, sensual pink lips. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we have created a sprite. Uh, we see here, this is the number of the sprite that we created. And now we're gonna try to draw the sprite on the screen. Okay? This is gonna be the SPR statement. Sprite, SPR, turns green. We're good, we're good. We're gonna open the parentheses and now we're gonna have to provide three numbers separated by commas. The first number is just gonna be the number of the sprite we're drawing. Number one, easy peasy for breezy. Number one, zero, zero, 001. You can write zero, zero, 001 if you want to, but it doesn't matter. You can also write one. The second and third number are gonna be just like here with the text, are just gonna be the coordinates of where the sprite should appear. 50, 70, sounds good to me, sounds good to me. Escape, run, bam, scary face appearing right there. Good. So let's see what else we can do. I mean, we can now, let's draw an orange. I'm, because I'm drinking an orange, kind of like juice, I'm kind of like into oranges right now. This is exactly something I'm excited about. Uh, is this, is this like an orange? Does this look like orange to you? It's a bit, maybe a bit too, yeah, that's an orange, that's nice. That's sprite number two. You're gonna write SPR, sprite number two now. 80, 90, whatever. Oops, come on, 90. Close the parentheses. Escape, run, bam, there is the orange. Good, good, good. Okay, so this gives you an idea how you can take sprites from here and how you can put them somewhere on the screen. Cool. Something I want you to keep in mind is that whatever we put in parentheses kind of like always turns blue. Isn't that kind of weird? Like how the text turns blue, uh, but also like all the numbers that we put in are blue. Also something I want you to keep in mind is that numbers generally so far, uh, they didn't have the quotation marks, but whenever we have text inside the parentheses, that kind of has to be enclosed in quotation marks. That's kind of like the rules here, but we're gonna maybe discuss them a little bit later, clarify a bit later what the difference here is and why we're doing this. Just so far, I just want you to, to pay attention that, to the fact that everything that we put in the parentheses so far has turned blue. Now, at this point, so you know how now how to make sprites, how to put sprites on the screen, you know how to put text on the screen. By the way, you can also change the color of the text so for example, if we have this print statement, I'm here, 80, 100, that's the position. You can put a third number in here and that third number will indicate uh, the color. So for example, let's do a pink color here, 40. Uh, X position, so the vertical position, Y position, the horizontal position is 100. And now 14, the third number 14, will turn that text pink. Escape run, bam, it's pink. I'm here, this is pink. Maybe the pink is not, not vibrant enough. Let's, let's, what color could, should we use red? Let's, let's try to use red. Instead of the 14, we're gonna put the red in here. Escape, run, bam, it's red now. By the way, I always write run, but um, there's actually an easier way of doing this, uh, a shortcut here. And I think we should, at, at this point, we should already uh, uh, teach you how that works. You can, at any given point, you can go Control R and that just straight up runs the program. You don't have to pr press the escape to, to go out and you don't have to type and run. 
And, you know, at some point it just will become like a second nature. You're going to write some code and you're going to hit a control run and bam, the program starts. And then you can press escape to return to editing the program. This is very, very fast, especially compared to other environments and, and becomes quite addictive. Control run, very important. Good. So as we are wrapping up this first program, this first lesson, uh, I'm going to also show you how to draw some shapes with code. That's something else that we can do. We can, for example, um, do a circ. That's a short for circle. And you can see it turned green immediately. We're going to put it, uh, and there's like three numbers that we're going to specify here. Um, the first two numbers are going to be the center of the circle. We're going to put it 64, 64. We're going to put it in the center of the screen. Now the next one is the radius of the circle. So you have, you know, you have a circle, and you know the length between the center of the circle and the edge of the circle. That's basically the the radius. Uh, this is sort of like a thirty, whatever. There's a fourth number we can specify here. That's the color of the circle. Maybe we can specify a color. What? Let's pick a, something that's incredibly ugly, like like this green here, eleven, eleven. So uh, so just like a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, two first two numbers, the position of the center of the circle, then the size, how big the circle is, and the last number, the color of the circle. Control R, bam, we have an ugly green circle in, in the center of the screen. Now, that's just like the, like the outline of the circle. The circle is not filled in. If you want to fill in the circle, instead of the circ, we need to use the circ fill. Circ is just a circle. Circ fill is a filled circle. Control R, bam. <laughs> Incredibly ugly green circle. Oh man, look at this beautiful, beautiful uh, artwork that we just created here. And of course, now we have circ, so we also have a rect. Get rect, everybody. Uh, that's a rectangle. And it works in a very similar way. Uh, we have uh, two numbers. That's going to be the left top left corner of the rectangle and then two other numbers is going to be the bottom right corner of the rectangle so um that's going to be 80 80 it's like a huge rectangle and there's a fifth number here that's going to be the, the color of the rectangle let's use uh, uh i don't know which uh, let's just use this blue here that's going to be 12 right so we're going to go go 12 here uh yeah and then just run this Bam! Ugly blue rectangle. And the same rule applies here as well. If you want to fill this with a color, uh, you can go rect fill. Uh, just add a fill after the rect, and it, it's you know just it's a kind of like a different statement. So um, so you know it's green now, uh, but if I start typing, it turns gray. It's like oh, I where where this is going, you know. As, but then you if you type in fill, and it turns green again. Uh, uh, so yeah. You're gonna have the beautiful blue rectangle. All right, all right. And if you know, if you want to have like a slimmer rectangle, you can do it. So you can have like something like a 40 in here and run, and you then, then the rectangle doesn't have to be a square, right? Okay, okay. A lot of commands here, quite confusing, I know. There's a lot of things to, to, to keep in mind. And it's like, do, do I have to remember all of these things? Something that you might, might be thinking now. No, you don't have to remember those things. Why would we have to remember those things? This is crazy. This is not school. We, we, we can cheat wherever we want. So there is actually a really cool thing that I want to show you right now. This is the Enhanced Pico H Cheat Sheet by Light BWK. And this is a very, very cool tool that is just like a list of all of the functions that we have in Pico 8. And if you ever forgot, you know, how a certain function is spelled, you can just look it up in a cheat sheet and you can do whatever you want with a cheat sheet. You can save it on the desktop. You can set it up as, as your desktop background if you want to. You can also print it out. I don't have a co print out copy with me right now, but I used to have these printed out. And, you know, so I, if I forget, you know, this is not really a place to look up what the functions do. You kind of have to remember what they do. You kind of have to remember that it, it's possible to draw rectangles. But if you don't know, you know, how, what exactly the command was to draw rectangles, you can look it up here. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, here, shapes. There we go. We have shapes drawing and there we go. We have rect. And it has even like, you know, in the 
the little uh, letters here reminding you what the different numbers are that you have to put in and so forth. You don't have to remember all of them. I don't remember myself all of them. And you know, some of these will come up more frequent than others for sure. I just really want to make sure that you are not stressing out too much about remembering everything that we just did today. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up with three things. First of all, this is beautiful stuff, right? This is our first program. This is amazing. Ah, oh, this is art. We want to preserve it for future generations. <laughs> we can. Uh, we're gonna call safe and then we have to give our program a name. Something like art. This is art. Bam, saved art. .p8. Now this entire program with all of the sprites and everything else has been saved into uh, the, 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 the uh, file name, a, f a file name on Pico8 called art.p8. And now if I restart Pico8, I can do that by typing reboot. This is as if we have relaunched Pico8. I can then load art.p8 and my program is back. So I haven't lost anything. This is good, this is good. And then from now on, you can just type in save and it will automatically save art. This is how you can, uh, you know, maintain your programs in Pico8. And in fact, here in this, in this, in this scary black window, you can type in dir uh, directory. And it will actually show you, you know, all of the files that exist on your system. I have a folder called demos, which is pink. I have another folder, which is pink called sync. I have, I have a bunch of stuff on my PC hidden in folders, mm -hmm. uh, but there's also art.ph. That's the file that we just created and it's there. Now, if you want to access this file and copy it maybe somewhere to Dropbox or whatever, or mail it to somebody, you can type in folder. And that will bring up, you know, whatever system, operating system you're working at, that should break out in folder of where the, f the actual file is stored on your actual computer, not on the simulated computer of Pico8, but your actual computer. You can actually have the P8 file here and you can mail it to somebody. You can save it. You can delete it. You can do whatever you want with this like this. This was thing number one. Thing number two introducing some vocabulary for later on. What we did here, this entire episode, what we did is so-called function calls. These green things, rectfill, circfills, SPR, print, CLS, all of these are functions. And what we did is we called them. When like on a cell phone, you're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. yes, 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 I want you to do the thing that we discussed, yes. Yes, it's supposed to be very ugly. Yes, yes. Print it right in the center of the screen. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Something like this, you know. We called them and we gave them some information. That's what we call a function call. And we're going to later on use this vocabulary later on. And finally, just copying the stuff that I write here won't actually teach you how to make games. It, this is not the idea. <laughs> I always think of of the little. There is like this meme of of, the, of this this the video of a like little doggy, and somebody takes the doggy into the pool, and the doggy is like really really tired, and then they, the the person like moves the doggy above the water, and the doggy starts making like the swimming motion with a, with a, with its little paws, and it's like really tired, and it's but it like it, it pretends it's swimming, you know, and it feels like it's swimming, but it's not swimming. Somebody carries them over the pool, right? It's the same thing. You don't want to be the doggy. You don't want to be like watching me do stuff here, and then you just copy the stuff and feel like oh, just your program. That's not that's not where programming learning programming begins. It's not about watching somebody do stuff. That's obviously a good first step, but you also have to get into the pool, <laughs> doggy. You have to start well, working on your own stuff. So this stuff is kind of fun to play around with it. And at the end of each episode, uh, there's going to be a doggy zone where I give you some kind of homework, where you, I give you some kind of challenges to get, you know, get messy, to jump in the pool yourself and start playing around with this because this is where the actual learning begins. So the doggy zone for this episode is going to be I want you to just start drawing stuff on the screen. And the very, very specific challenge is I want you to make this look like, like a shoot, shoot em up. I want you to create a sprite for a spaceship. I want you to create a sprite for an enemy, whatever size you want. It could be like a huge boss enemy, maybe a small enemy. 
maybe a small enemy would be good, but also maybe a good big enemy. You maybe multiple enemies, at least one. And I want you to create a sprite for a bullet. Three three things, at least three sprites. And then I want you to put these these on the screen somehow so it looks like a video game, like a screenshot from, from a video game. This is what in game development we call a mock-up. I want you to create a mock-up of your awesome video game because in the next episode we are going to learn how to turn those mock-ups into something that's animated and alive. Now before we go I also wanted to give a huge shout out to the people that made this tutorial possible. The beautiful people from my coffee. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my supporters on Coffee. We have an astonishing number of newcomers this month, including Blixton, Jer, Art Sturgeon, Angelo Dante, Maciek, James Washington, Senor Baub, Arya JP, Cheb, Lost Deku, Bello Rec, The Gecko, Emmanuel Barrieros, Clement, Jan, Jonathan, Matthew, Ijimo and Ravi. And also, as always, big shout outs to the regular Donut Plus crew, including Ted Carter, BB Samurai, Andrew Edstrom, Pendle Tong, Groove MD, Luckmare, Creeper Speak, The Coxworth, Cheap Shot, One Eyed Rabbit, Mario Carballo, Kevin Thompson, Pavel Shimchikovsky, Bretsky, Emperor Snow, Hnork, and all caps. And you can also support this channel on Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there's no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind the scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazy devs. All right, this is it everybody. We all did our first big step to become an awesome game developer. We learned about how to write some code. We wrote a bunch of code. It's not the most complicated code in the world, but it, gosh, it's, it's striking visuals. <laughs> you, you can't say this is not striking in some way. It stimulates the eye nerves for sure. Uh, we took this crane out of the box and we started just drawing around on the screen and seeing what happens. And I think this is important. Just having fun with tools that are there, seeing what, uh, what they allow you to do. In the next episode, we're gonna take this beautiful art and we're gonna make it move. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.